Hello everyone. Did you ever try to do something like this? Get 41k DPS on a condition virtuoso on the golem? Now with this video I can't promise you that you are going to reach that kind of DPS immediately after watching it. Of course, this takes a lot of practice to get right. However, what we can talk about is how to get a good first number on the golem. For example, something like 41k DPS as a first number with doing a good opening. And I've get, gotten a lot of questions about the opening because I feel like the opening is what's most relevant about Condition Virtuoso. After the opener, a lot of things just goes into simple priority rules, but the opening has a lot of different stuff going on that is quite difficult to unpack as a beginner player especially. And the other thing about the opening is, is that it is very similar on most raid bosses and most actual encounters because optimizing your damage for the first 20 seconds is what is useful in general whereas optimizing for a 100 second fight is probably not that important. So in this video we're going to look at the opening trying to understand the skill order and in order to do that we will start slowly and build up towards the full thing. First what I mean by opening is just what we do on the sword set at the start, then what we do on the first focus set, and finally finishing with the final sword 5 of this opening. So it's roughly the first 12 or 13 seconds of the golem we're going to look at. And what you need for the opening to work is you need to be crit capped, which only works with food if you have the standard gear. I have exactly 100% crit chance. Like if you have 99.9 .9, it will still work, but if you randomly don't crit you might not generate blades in a sufficient quantity and as a result the opening will fall apart. Alright. And so what we do here at the start is very instructive. Um, if we cast a dagger 3 you will notice, let's disable auto attack for a second. You'll notice that it doesn't put us in combat immediately. It takes one full second to start the combat timer because the initial pulse actually doesn't do damage. Only now it ticks, right? So the reason we are starting with a dagger three is that we can just precast it freely and it's just free damage on top. If we started with another skill, we don't have the same damage, but the combat would have started earlier, which is bad for DPS. Now this is a trick that is done on the golem, but of course you can do the same on many raid bosses where you can spawn the dagger 3 before your group engages. For example on, let's say, Slothazor, you can place that dagger 3 right as the, the boss transform into hostile. On Slothosaur, probably you should not try to kill your allied slubbing with it. Um, but on Mursat Overseer, you can easily spawn the Dagger 3 before you can actually target Mursat Overseer. And so on. So, and that's why we start with a Dagger 3. And for a similar reason, we will start with a Blade Turn Requiem. It's important that we that you have five blades when you start it. At the golem you can achieve five blades by just spamming your buttons and then resetting the golem. Then you have five blades very easily. And for the same reason we place this, because it only starts doing damage one second later. And this is a free precast again. So the opening is dagger three F5. For that you really need F5 on a key binding that you can reach with your keyboard. It's not enough to be able to mouse click it. It's not good enough. So dagger 3 into F5. And the real skill that actually starts the fight is then the Phantasmal sword Swordsman. And here it's important to understand that the F5 doesn't have a cast time. So we go dagger 3 into sword 5. And you can cue this. Oh. 
I didn't, if you take a look at the combat log here, it went cleanly from unstable blade storm into into um into the illusionary sword attack without any kind of um, auto attacks. So we, you queue up the dagger three with the sword five and press the F five during it. It's important to get this right because if you do this wrong let's do it wrong for once we do the dagger three and then auto attack once it's just like an auto attack that is completely avoidable saving ourselves 400 milliseconds auto attacking and this is a pretty significant damage loss if you do it wrong so I really go dagger three into sword five and after the sword five you want to swap the weapon and our situation is as such that we have no blades, so we can't actually use our blade songs. And what we want to do is to generate blades, so Dagger 2 is our next best skill. And then we use our Focus 5 to generate more blades. And because there are no, there's a chance that we don't have 5 blades yet, at that point we use the heal skill to stall one more second with buttons we want to press anyway and then go with the F1 Shatter. So again, Dagger 3, F5, Sword 5, 2, 5, Heal Skill, F1. And that's it for the opening. And you can see that the F1 always has 5 blades at that point. You can really trust it to work. It has five blades. And what you saw there was a combination. I actually accidentally clicked the next skill already. It was a Phantasmal Warden. And after we've done our F1, we have summoned all the skills we need to summon in order to get to five blades again for an F2. The problem is we need some more time. Like the, the Phantasmal Wardens, they take even though they do quite a bit of blade generation, like it takes them quite a bit of time to fill up our blades, right? And so, so we need to give the Phantasmal Warden time. And since we don't really have a skill to press anymore, we do one auto attack at that point. And what we're also going to do is we're going to use our thousand cuts at this point, which just adds 10 bleeding stacks, 10 10 bleeding stacks result in two blades and these 10 bleeding stacks and the two blades are coming in handy because we're quite tight on blades at that point we would like to generate them a bit faster and that's why we don't use thousand cuts at the start where we're not having blade issues but delay it by like three or four seconds what is more optimal opening so again now we press thousand cuts and you see this progression. You saw me. Um, I always had, I always had five blades when I did my shattering. What I did was the F1 as before, followed by a focus five, then stalling for one auto attack. We needed 400 more milliseconds, so we did an auto attack, and then we were able to unleash our F2 with five blades. And then we still have no buttons to press. Or we are stalling for another 800 milliseconds with two auto attacks. And this gives enough blades for, for another F1 skill. And let's do it once more. Maybe to get this really down. So dagger 3, F5, sword 5. Then press 2, 5, heal. F1. 5 again. Press the 1000 cuts at that point. Then we stall with one auto attack for our F2. Then we stall with two more auto attacks for our F1 again. And at that point, um, we have pressed all our shatters. We have pressed this one twice, this one once, and this one once as well. So we are ready for Signet of Illusions action. And before the Signet of Illusions, we can actually press another dagger too, which we are going to do. 
Just watch closely. Two second of illusions. Okay. And this is how as far as I want to get. And so let's look at this second part more closely. So we did our dagger three F5, sword five, two five heal, F1. Then we stalling, so we do five one auto attack and then F2. We're stalling some more with two auto attacks and press thousand cuts and press F1. Then we have the dagger two ready again. So we use it to immediately generate the blade and one more once it's completed. Press signet of illusions. And now at that point, we reset all our shatters with it. And the continuation after this signet of illusions is actually, it depends a bit on what you want to do do with the next second of illusions and I'm going to talk about it later in more detail but the reason we are pressing F2 is on the one hand it does quite some damage um, it's like our best chatter it's better than this and better than that one so yeah it's certainly very good to start with it but there are situations where starting with it, another one would also work so yeah and after we've done that, that F2, after the signal of illusions, you can straight up do it because you have five blades. Um, or you're going to have five blades. It's just the focus phantasms that work into the future to generate blades, even though you're not attacking during the signal of illusions. So yeah, that's pretty good about them. Anyway, when you do that, you do F2. And then you have some stalling time again before you can go F1. And we're going to look at this right now. So now we have stalling time for exactly three auto attacks. All right. And so maybe to recap on the stalling time, um, the blades are not there yet. So we fill the time with auto attacks. And once this time is up, we know exactly how long it takes because we've done it a hundred times on the golem. Um, so once this time is up, you then press the shatter and you you get you will have five plates for it. So the stalling times you have to re remember is one auto attack first, right at the start. And then you do two auto attacks for the next one. And then the next one is three auto attacks. And yeah. And you go with three auto attacks, F1 into dagger three. And let's do that again. So we can memorize it. Okay, we messed up a bit, but it's okay. One, two, three. Yeah, that was messed up. Okay. Something didn't work out at the start with the weapon swap. It didn't go on cooldown, that's bad. So let's do it once more properly. Okay. One, two, three, and we can F1 into dagger. Three. And that's it, basically. F1, dagger three. And then we can do one more stalling attack because our dagger two is not on cooldown yet. And then we go dagger two, weapon swap, and sword five. And that's the end of the opening. All right. One, two, three. Auto attack, weapon swap, and sword five. And then you F5 once you have the blades for it. And that's the opener already. Now there are two more things I want to talk about. The first thing is that at the start of a raid encounter you get five blades. This means that if you already have five blades you can just press F5 before you enter combat and then get five blades. This allows you to essentially do a double blade song at the start which is a big increase to your burst capabilities. The second thing I want to, you to consider is how to prioritize your shatters after the initial signal of illusions. 
as I've alluded to earlier, there are different ways of doing it and they kind of depend on what you want to do. So the way it works on the golem is as such. I know that my Signet of Illusions has a 60 second cooldown. With Alacrity, this reduces to roughly 48 seconds, 49 if you consider its initial cast time. So we want to cast the Signet of Illusions again in the future. And we know we are going to cast it roughly 49 seconds into the future. So since the Signet of Illusions resets our cooldowns of the Shatters, we know that the order in which we press them isn't that important. What matters is how often we get to cast a skill before the Signet of Illusions reset. So we want to get, for example, um, four Blade Song Sorrows into that time window of 49 seconds. And in order to get four Blade Song Sorrows into that time window, considering that th these can be cast roughly once every 15 seconds with alacrity, we know that we have to put pretty high priority on them. Let's say we press them perfectly at the start and then after 15, 30 and 45 seconds, then at 49 seconds comes the Signet of Illusions. So you see, you can allow yourself a small delay of up to 4 seconds on the F2, but not much more. And let's look at Blade Turn Requiem in comparison. At a cooldown of 25.5 seconds, roughly 21 seconds with Alacrity, we can cast this skill at the start then at 21 seconds and at 42 seconds. We could also cast it at 63 seconds, but by that point we, we will already have pressed our Saint of Illusions, since this comes 50 seconds after the previous one. So, what do we have here in overview? We have that the Blade, Blade Song Sorrow needs to be cast pretty much of cooldown in order to fit four times into these 49 seconds. We can have a small delay, that's okay, but not that big of a delay. On the other hand, the Blade Turn Requiem, it only needs to fit three times, because it won't fit four times anyway. So Blade Turn Requiem can be delayed a little bit. And then there's the F1, which is kind of weird because of the ammo system. And since the ammo system, when you press Signet of Illusions, Let's get it to zero charges quickly. When pressing the illusions, we actually only gain one charge. So, the signet, uh, the blade song har harmony. This guy can basically be managed with the signet of illusions um, to never overflow in charges. So this is kind of on the exterior. Now, if you take back, a, take a look at the opening again, how we how we use these skills is we actually managed to keep Bladesong Harmony from ever reaching two charges again, while also fulfilling the fact that we don't delay our Bladesong Sorrow and we have some flexibility with Blade Turn Requiem. I will quickly do this on the Golem so you see the full opening again. Go into and now we prioritize f2 and then and we do this f5 last because we had seven seconds and you can see none of these shatters have overflowed so far and this is basically how it's going to work so we do not delay the f2 we do delay the F5 a little bit in favor of the Blade Song Harmony, so this never reaches two charges. Having said that, prompts me to make two more footnotes. As I've explained, the Blade Song Sorrow has a four second time reserve, which you could use up. You could delay your F2 for four seconds. Now, generally, this is a bad idea. Why? Because once we press the Signet of Illusions, 
we want to have everything on cooldown before that. Now, if I delay my F2 for four, four seconds and I delay my F5 for seven seconds, then what will happen is that right before I want to press the Signet of Illusions, both my Blade Song Sorrow and my Blade Turn Requiem need to be pressed one last time. If you want to see this in action, you can look at the Golem benchmark and you will notice how tight it is around this Signet of Illusion reset point. So what I am doing on the Golem is I'm putting full priority on the Blade Song Sorrow, so I don't use up those four seconds, which lets me cast the Blade Song Sorrow quite early, the final one, gives me time to recover five blades, and then lets me empty my blades again with a blade turn requiem. So even though theoretically you could delay your F2 as well, it's not a good idea to delay both of these. You have to decide on one of them. This is the first thing I wanted to say. And the second thing I want to say is that obviously this is now about fighting a golem where you know you will have a second segment of illusions. Now, many raid bosses, strike bosses, fractal bosses, etc. do not exactly work out like this. And in general, you can't say that one of the shatters is to be prioritized on every fight. You have to think about each fight for, your, for yourself. If you don't have Signal of Illusions, for example, it makes no sense to delay a Blade Turn Requiem, which is basically as strong as a Blade Song Harmony, or even stronger because it has no cast time. So in a real fight with no Signal of Illusion coming up, you might change the skill order of the Shatters. And on the other hand, like if, if the fight is about to end, um, you might want to prioritize these two Shatters because they do more damage immediately, and the F5 is rather slow at applying its condis in the first place. So real scenarios will change what you want to do. However, the golem opening I've showed um, is still very much one of the best ways to, to play in short fights. Like we have a 42k number at roughly 20 seconds, which is pretty good as an opening for a Condi class. And there isn't much you could do to increase the burst. So I feel safe recommending this rotation to you in general. Obviously you could do more, you could get more out of it if you thought about specific fights, but it's a really good general thing to follow as well. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you now understand how the opening of Condition Virtuoso came to be and can apply some of it in your own gameplay. Have a good day.